Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Erin and today we are doing another movie video. We're going to be talking about some of my favorite scary movies on Shudder. If you don't know what Shudder is, just think of Netflix and Hulu but for horror. That's it. So it just has a bunch of horror movies, series, all kinds of things. It's just all for horror fans and it's freaking awesome. I it's so good. Honestly, if you don't have it, definitely look into it. I've watched it more than I've watched probably Netflix or Hulu combined, and I haven't even had Shudder for a full six months yet. I don't even think so. I think I've only had it for about four or five, and I've watched it so much more than I have Hulu or Netflix just because I like the movies so much better, and I just feel like it's a good collection. They also have like all kinds of categories. It's separated really nicely on the uh, website or app or whatever you, you use. You can just find movies really nicely on it. It's just, it's just a really, really good subscription. I'm really, really happy that I have it. Um, this isn't sponsored by the way, although Shudder, me, you know, just keep my name in your head, you know future. Yeah, I really like Shudder and I thought it would be fun to share with you guys some of my favorite movies that I've watched on Shudder. Now, I haven't watched every movie on Shudder. Obviously, that would be a lot of movies to have watched in that many months, although I probably could have done it, but I haven't watched every single movie. These are just the movies that I have seen and really, really liked. I'm just going to tell you the synopsis of the movie on Shudder and then I'm going to tell you guys why I liked it. And that's about it. I have 12 movies, so let's get into it. The first movie I want to talk about is called Better Watch Out and it is a Christmas horror movie which is very appropriate for this time of year I think. And it says, this holiday season you may be home but you're not alone. In this fresh and gleefully twisted spin on home invasion horror, babysitter Ashley must defend her young charges when intruders break into the house one snowy night. Or so she thinks. Now, this movie is probably one of the best Christmas horror movies I've seen because some of them are just so bad, like really bad, and this one is so good. It's creepy. It's surprising. It keeps your attention. It has a crazy plot twist. It's so good. The acting is amazing as well, which, you know, sometimes acting can be a little hit or miss in some of these scary movies because, you know, some of the movies are B-movies. But this one, I was really, really impressed. You do have some well-known people in this movie, like Dacker Montgomery from Stranger Things. I think that's how you say his name. Dacker? Dacker Montgomery? Uh, but he's from Stranger Things. And then Patrick Warburton, who is Kronk from Emperor's New Groove, but he's in a bunch of other things. That's just the first thing that comes to mind when I hear his name. But overall, it's just a really... It's just a really good movie. I've seen it twice, <laughs> which says a lot for me because I usually don't rewatch movies unless it's super, super, super good. So I really, really liked this one a lot. It's probably one of my absolute favorites on this list, if not my absolute favorite on this list. So just keep that in your mind. Next up we have a foreign film. This is called Shrew's Nest and it is Spanish. I have been trying to watch more foreign scary movies just because I feel like I don't watch enough of them and some of them are so so amazing and I feel like people miss out if they're turned off by subtitles and I know not everyone can watch subtitles um, some people have trouble following along and stuff like that, but if you are able to, I highly recommend giving them a chance. Um, it's, you just, you miss out on a lot of good things if you don't give them a chance. But this one's called Shrew's Nest, and it says, In 1950s Spain, an agoraphobic woman spends her days inside the apartment she shares with her sister, who she's raised since their mother died. But when a handsome neighbor knocks on her door seeking help after a fall, Monse dresses his wounds and sets about ensuring he'll never leave her apartment 
either. So when I first read the plot of this one, it really reminded me of Misery by Stephen King. And I really liked Misery. The movie is really good. I have never read the book, but I really like the movie. And this gave me similar vibes. It's not the same, obviously. There is a lot of differences, but it does have that same feeling of misery. It does have a lot of psychological aspects as well, and I really, I just really liked the overall plot. I thought the acting was very well done. It didn't feel too over the top or too exaggerated or anything like that. Sometimes I really feel like actors or actresses, they can be a little over the top with their acting, but I didn't feel like this at all with this movie, and it's just really good. There's a good plot twist in there as well, and I just really liked it. I enjoyed it, and it's a great Spanish horror film, and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Next up, we have Monster Party, and I am so excited to talk about this one. It says, three small-time thieves specializing in home burglary pose as caterers for a fancy dinner party at the Malibu mansion of the extravagantly wealthy Dawson family. But their plan for the perfect heist goes horribly wrong. Now, I don't want to give too much away about this, this movie. I almost said story like I'm doing a book review. I don't want to give too much away about this movie because I feel like it's very intense if you don't know what's going on at first. It's very intense. That intensity builds up the entire time you're watching it and you just have this feeling in your stomach that something's about to happen. Something bad is about to happen and it just keeps building and building and building until you hit the most crucial point where everything starts happening. Ooh, wow, it's so good. It's very bloody. It's very gory. It's very violent. So if you don't like that kind of thing, you don't like watching that kind of thing, definitely don't watch this because the kill scenes are very bloody and, you know, gruesome. It's, it's kind of graphic, but it also does have like a hint of comedy in it. I don't know if it's meant to be a horror comedy or not, but it does have funny moments and not a lot of them, and it's not too obvious, but just like a hint of funny, and it's very strange, but it also works really well. So highly, 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 highly recommend Monster Party. Very good. Next up, we have Incident in a Ghost Land, and this is actually one of the first movies I watched after getting Shudder, and let me just tell you what it's about. On the first night in their new home, Colleen and her daughters suffer a terrifying home invasion. 16 years later, eldest Beth reunites with her family at the dark house where Colleen and Vera still live. Something strange is happening again. And that's it. And honestly, go into this movie with an open mind. Go into this movie just with no expectations because that's what I did and it blew me away. This is an intense movie. You have no idea what's happening at first. No idea. Very confusing. It was almost not boring, just weirdly like nothing was happening at first. It just felt like nothing and I was confused because I was like, this doesn't really make a lot of sense. And then when everything hits you, it is like an electric shock. It's crazy. It is such a good movie. This is from the directors of Martyrs, which I've heard a lot of people talk about on like Twitter and stuff. I've never seen Martyrs before, but it is from the director of that movie. So if that gives you any indication, but yeah, this is an intense movie. It's it's a lot. <laughs> like it's a lot. Honestly, it's Like, it's a lot, but it's so, so good. Such a good movie. Highly, highly, highly recommend. Next up, we have Lake Bodum, which is another foreign film. This is Finnish, actually, which I thought was super cool, and I really enjoyed it for so many reasons, but let me tell you what it's about. 
Four teens get some scary surprises when they camp out at Finland's Lake Bodum, the site of a grisly massacre back in 1960. With the killer still at large, the teens have plenty of time to theorize about who might really be responsible and if he's still out there. Right on cue, when the kids tuck in, footsteps start approaching and a killer emerges. When I first started this movie and it got to the the lake and everything started happening, I was really confused because I thought it was going one way. Let's just put it out there. I thought it was going one way and then it takes a left turn. This is right, but it's left to you guys. So it takes a left turn, right? And then it takes another turn. And it's just like turn, turn, turn. And then at the end, you're kind of just left like, what? Now I will say this probably isn't the most greatest horror movie ever. I don't think the acting is amazing, but I do think it was good after a certain point. After you got used to it and after you let it start kind of going, it felt more realistic and felt more lifelike and not so robotic. At first I was a little like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna like this, but I gave it a chance and the ending whoa I did not expect it so highly recommend it it was really cool to watch a Finnish movie that's the first Finnish movie I've ever seen and I really enjoyed it so next up is the movie Emily and it says as their parents head out for a date night the three young Thompson children immediately take to their new babysitter Anna who seems like a dream come true she's sweet fun and lets them do things that break all of the rules but as Anna's interactions with them take on a more sinister tone, the kids realize that their caretaker may not be who she claims to be. And soon it's up to big brother Jacob to protect his siblings from the increasingly nefarious intentions of a very disturbed woman. Now, I know it's a second babysitting movie. I love babysitting movies. But this one, if you've ever seen The House of the Devil, that scary movie, this is very reminiscent of it. It kind of has the same feel and I'm pretty sure it's by the same people so that's probably why but this is such an interesting movie because in the very beginning you know something's wrong. It pretty much lets you know at the very beginning that something is up with Anna. Anna is not she's not what she seems okay so you know that from like the very first few minutes but I don't know her increasingly weird behavior and I mean weird there are some very very bad moments in here some to do with a hamster and so if you don't like um animal things probably maybe don't watch this or if you see it coming skip it because um you know there is a hamster scene so uh, be on the lookout if you do end up watching that. But her behavior is just so strange and it becomes increasingly apparent that something is very bad. It's just her behavior, I think. It's the behavior. It's the things that she does. It, they're so strange and so off-putting that you, you start freaking out. Like you start getting worried for these children. But very good movie. I made my boyfriend and my mom watch it and they were kind of mad at me because I made them watch movies back to back with intense endings and kind of bad characters that were pretty evil and so they were very mad at me for this one because they thought that I was leading them astray with an ending that they weren't going to like. But it's a good movie. Check it out. Okay, next up we have a movie called Revenge and I am going to tell you right now I have some trigger warnings for this movie so let me read you the plot and then I'll give you those. It says, Jen is enjoying a romantic getaway with her wealthy boyfriend which is suddenly disrupted when his sleazy friends arrive for an unannounced hunting trip. Tension mounts until the situation abruptly and viciously intensifies, culminating in a shocking act that leaves Jen left for dead. 
Unfortunately for her assailants, Jen survives and re-emerges with a relentless, wrathful intent. Revenge. Trigger warning, this has rape in it, uh, so I'm just gonna come right out and say that because it's, it's upsetting. Uh, it was upsetting for me to watch, so if you are, if you are triggered by rape, I, I would probably skip this because it is, it's not good. It's not a great, it's not a great scene. So, also lots of blood. Lots of blood in this movie. Very gory, very violent, very bloody, okay? So, those two things, just remember that. Otherwise, this movie is immaculate. Oh my god. The main character, Jen, is such an awesome character. You root for her the entire time. She is so badass. She is... she's awesome, okay? I'm just gonna put it out there. She is so good, and the awful parts are so awful in this movie, but the awesome woman badass moments are so much better. So, just keep that in mind, but my boyfriend loves this movie. He thought it was fantastic. He gives it like an 11 out of 10. He thinks everyone should watch it. So, if you want to take his word for it and my word for it, I definitely think you should check it out as long as you keep in mind those trigger warnings. Next up, we have 30 Miles from Nowhere, and it says, After the suicide of their old college pal, six friends descend upon the Wisconsin summer home they frequented in their youth. The creep factor at the cabin is high, with a thumping in the crawl space, blood spurting from the pipes, and a cockroach infestation in the guest bedroom. When a dead man starts appearing at the windows, they begin to wonder who they buried, if not their friend, and find themselves faced with the ultimate human dilemma, to kill or be killed in order to make it to mourning. Now, I know what you're thinking. This movie is not what it seems, and that's pretty much the reason I like it. It's only 83 minutes long, so it's actually pretty short. But the whole time you think one thing is happening, and then at the end you're just completely shocked. At least I was. Okay, I don't know how many people thought that about this movie, but I was completely shocked about the ending. Had no idea where this was going. It threw me for a loop. It was insane, and I really liked the way it ended. So, yeah, well, actually, I kind of like the way it ended. There's some hit or misses there for me, but it was a crazy ending, which made me like it more than I would have if it was just a normal ending. So, keep that in mind. Next up, we have Summer of 84, and this says, It's the summer of 1984, the perfect time to be 15 years old and free. But when neighborhood conspiracy theorist Davy Armstrong begins to suspect his police officer neighbor might be the serial killer all over the local news, he and his three best friends begin an investigation that soon turns dangerous. Now, when I first read this plot, I immediately thought of Disturbia with Shia LaBeouf, which is a very good movie, by the way. Amazing movie. I love that. I also really like Shia LaBeouf. But, good movie, and this made me think of it. Now, this movie... I love the idea of it, and I really like m most of this movie, but I do feel like it's a little bit boring. <laughs> I felt like a big chunk of the movie is pretty boring and kind of nothing happening, and then the last 30, 35 minutes is just a whirlwind. And now I actually think I like it more after seeing the entire thing, and I feel like if I rewatch it, I'll like it more than I did the first time I watched it, but there, there, it is a little bit boring, it is a little bit slow, but the ending is actually worth it, honestly. The last 30 minutes is so crazy that I would watch the other parts just to get to the end again. 
I don't know. It's a very interesting movie. I think a lot of people will like it and I think it'll be, I think it'll check a lot of boxes for people. Um, it's not my favorite on this list, but I did want to include it because I do like it. So I'm not going to talk too much about this one because I included it in my favorite horror movies video a, f a little while ago. I'll link it if you haven't seen that, but it is Sleepaway Camp. I'll read you the plot really quick, but I'm not going to talk too much about it. Slightly traumatized and painfully shy, Angela Baker is sent away to summer camp with her cousin. Not long after Angela's arrival, things start to go horribly wrong for anyone with bad intentions. Who is the secret killer and what's behind their murderous motivation? It's a very cheesy slasher, very over the top, very B-movie-esque, but it's so good. It's so good. If you like 80s slashers and you like the cheese, you like the kind of cringy dialogue, you kind of just thrive off of that, please watch it. It's so much fun. The ending is insane. Didn't see it coming at all. So I think it's worth it. Not going to talk too much about it watch it. Next up we have Scare Me, which says, During a power outage, two strangers tell scary stories. The more Fred and Fanny commit to their tales, the more the stories come to life in the dark of a cat skills cabin. The horrors of reality manifest when Fred confronts his ultimate fear. Fanny may be the better storyteller. I love this. It's funny. It's a dark comedy. It's very good. I loved Fanny my favorite character by far. The dynamic between Fred and Fanny is frustrating but also very funny and I really like the overall message behind the movie and I think it's really well done and I really really enjoyed it. It's a good it's a good one. I highly highly recommend that. Next up we have Satanic Panic which I actually saw last night. It's very new to me. I just watched it and yeah, let me read you the plot. Sam's first day as a pizza delivery driver is not going according to plan. At the end of a long day and not enough tips, her last delivery turns out to be for a group of Satanists looking for someone to sacrifice. Now in a fight for her life, Sam must fend off witches, evil spells, and demonic creatures, all while trying to keep her body and soul intact. Now this is definitely a horror comedy, so if you don't like those, might not be for you. I'm not usually a fan of comedy and horror just because I don't feel like it can necessarily work all the time. It has to be very specific plots and actors and stuff like that. But this movie was so much fun. The first like 25 minutes, I was a little hesitant because I felt like the acting was maybe a little... Uh, the main character, Sam, just kind of, I don't know, she didn't really get my attention in the first 20 minutes. However, this movie got so much better after she runs into the Satanists and they're trying to sacrifice her. It gets so much better. And it is really funny and it's actually really good. And the acting, I feel like, did turn around after that like 20, 25 minute mark. I don't know why the beginning was just kind of rough for me, but after I moved past it, I thought it was so <laughs> funny. And then I found out after I had watched the entire movie that the original screenplay and the story was written by Grady Hendrix. <laughs> I love Grady Hendrix. Um, hello, he's an amazing horror author and I love his books, so it's actually no surprise that I really ended up liking this movie because it's definitely a Grady Hendrix story. It really captures what he's like. So if you do like Grady Hendrix and his books, I highly, highly recommend checking this out because it was funny, it kept me on my toes, it was interesting, and at the end I was like, I did like this. I did like it. Overall, I liked it. <sighs> I feel like I've been talking so long. I tried to make this video not 400 years long, but it's kind of hard to talk about movies in a short amount of time. I didn't want to give you guys too much information, but I also wanted to give you guys enough information, so... I don't know. You can let me know in the comments down below if you like these kinds of videos. Maybe I can do them for Netflix and Hulu as well. 
or you know whatever you guys want to see i just thought this would be fun and i've been having so much fun watching movies on shutter that i thought it would be fun to do a video for you guys about some of the ones that i really enjoyed <sighs> i'm gonna stop talking now because i am really tired i've been talking for like 30 minutes straight and I'm sure you guys are done hearing me talk. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. It lets me know what kind of content you enjoy from me. That way I can keep providing you with that kind of content. Also, if you like me talking about movies, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. That way I can keep doing movie videos. I, I'm always a little hesitant with horror movie videos just because I have very different taste from a lot of people and I don't know if people are going to like the same things as me. So you'll have to let me know in the comments down below. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We can become friends and talk about movies, makeup, books, anything horror related. And it'll be lots of fun. And I hope you guys have a really good day. I will see you guys on Wednesday with another video. Bye.